Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm Dr. Melissa Grill Peterson. I want to just take a moment and make sure you all look over the Pneumatica disclaimer. This material is presented by myself, Dr. Melissa Grill Peterson, and Functional Medicine Agency. And we just want to thank Pneumatica for hosting the event tonight. So, why are we all here? Well, we're going to start a four part discussion on clinical nutrition. So this is webinar one of four, and we're going to really understand a more functional approach to clinical nutrition so that it can help you, the practitioner, improve patient outcomes as well as drive profit in your practice. So this is really for any type of practitioner out there that's already utilizing nutrition or clinical nutrition in your practice, or you understand the importance, you want to learn more and start to wrap your head around it, even if you're not treating for this, but you want to understand the role that it's playing in your patient's health and outcomes, then keep watching this webinar. We're excited to have you tonight, everybody. So here's a few things that you can expect on the webinar and why we're watching this together. So make sure you got a pen and paper ready to take active notes. We will make the notes available to you as well, just for attending. So we're going to start off by looking at what is functional nutrition, and we're going to get a better understanding tonight of how food is impacting your health and healing. We're going to look at food in the role of information and the biochemical and genetic uniqueness of each individual's health and how it's actually impacted as a result of the foods they're eating. Patient-centered care, identifying triggers and mediators as detected in the clinical history, evaluation, and examination. Yes, we're actually going to pull back the curtain and just kind of refresh your brain, reorient it to some simple things you can look for in your clinical exam that will already tell you a lot about what's going on in regards to nutrition in your patient's health and body. And then finally, we're going to be looking at the actual literature. I've got some great peer-reviewed um, articles and research studies that we're going to look at in regards to understanding nutritional strategies for yourself, your patients, and your practice. So guys, in case you have not joined me on a webinar or come to one of my live events or worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, I really want to personally thank you for being here. I know that your time is valuable, and I want to commend you because you're investing in yourself as well as your patient's health. Just a small snippet about me, um, I've been out in this clinical wellness space for well over 20 years. I'm the CEO of Functional Medicine Agency and of the Inspired Health Institute. I've been in practice for about 18 years. My doctorate's in chiropractic. I'm board certified in holistic health. My master's of science is concentrated in wellness. And I have literally kind of, I've worn it all. I started back in fitness about 25 years ago, went through nutrition, taught every type of you know, yoga and fitness class you could imagine, got into chiropractic, and it just kept going and going and going. And over my lifetime of health and wellness, my, my goal has always been in understanding uh, how to bring all the pieces together. Because I've, known, I've learned it's not just one thing or another. We are all dynamic human beings, as are our patients. And so, you know, really my passion and my area of specialty in my practice is functional medicine because that's really where we put on our detective hat as a healthcare practitioner. We're looking for root cause, what's causing this. We ask the questions why. And, you know, as I've run this in my practice and as functional medicine has really picked up momentum and evolved, especially over the past decade, I've had more and more docs coming to me saying, how do we do it? How do we do it? How do we do it? And that really got me into more of a full-time coaching and consulting and practice management role. And so at this point, I look at myself as I'm on a mission as your advocate because I've been there and continue to be there. I know what it's like to just want to bring your passion every day. And I also know what it's like to lose your passion in practice, right? Like have so many demands coming at you that it can become really overwhelming and it can be a struggle. So tonight I want to break you free of any struggle or overwhelm. I want to help to simplify the process. I want you to know I'm in your corner. I get it. Everything I'm sharing with you is real time. It's real time strategies that you're going to be able to implement into your practice for greater success. Because guess what? Success really does leave clues. And tonight, we're going to look at some of the clues, especially in the realm of clinical. Now, over the past decade that I've been consulting, this isn't just my findings, but literally the research shows. So 
as the IFM, you know, Institute for Functional Medicine has come out and, and really been the leader looking at this integrative healthcare space, there's been more and more studies about what doctors need because we're all feeling the pressures of the change in healthcare. And there's four common areas that doctors and, and practitioners in the space are shown to really struggle in. And that's the marketing side, the business sales side, the clinical, and the automation I put down, but really it's work-life balance. It's finding those systems that can automate so we can have greater work-life balance. Now, at our signature seminar series, which I'll tell you more about later, but it's called the Cash Practice Accelerator, and we're so happy to be partnered up with New Medica on that, we really cover all four of these areas. We take you step by step through a very turnkey model, proven systems that really help you in all four areas. Because let's face it, all of us have holes in our bucket. That's what I call them. You'll hear me refer to that often. Tonight, we're just really digging into the clinical aspect as we talk about clinical nutrition, because I want you to realize again, success leaves clues and it doesn't just happen. If you're currently doing well in practice. You're good, but you're not great. Things are okay, but you still have a lot of frustrations. You're still not hitting those financial goals that you'd like to. You're still not having the consistency of the type and quality of patient that you want. You know, these are all things that matter because you as the doctor, you're not meant to just take what you can get. You're here to get what you want. But to get those outcomes means that you have to have a vision. You have to have an idea of what you don't want to know what you do want because outcomes don't just happen. You have to know the path to go down to achieve the results you want. Now, we talk all about this in the Cash Practice Accelerator Seminar Series, and it's a whole process really of reverse engineering, and we'll go into that in depth there. But for today, I want you to think about the clinical results you want. Let's just start there, okay? We're not going to take it all on tonight. We're just talking clinical. And I want you to think about the outcomes that your patients want. That's why they come to see you and the outcomes that you want to be able to provide for them. Because in order to get there, it's not just a single service, a single visit, a single supplement, a single test. That doesn't get the outcome. That's a step in the process, but that doesn't create the road to success. So it's about having the right tools and systems in place so you can succeed. Now, I want you to think about this. When it comes to uh, really being in practice, you know, we're going tonight talk about how clinical nutrition can literally be used as a valuable tool in that overall clinical path to success for you, to get to those outcomes that both you and your patients desire. So I want you to think really simply, the system that we're going to talk about tonight is going to be kind of a three-step path from exam to care to correction. And we're going to look at how nutrition fits into this and how you're going to start to pick up on the clues of that root cause, what's going on in that exam, that will then drive your clinical decision to determine what type of care do they really need beyond just another test or beyond a single supplement, what type of comprehensive care so that ultimately we can get those outcomes of clinical correction. That's the system that we're going to go through, okay? So we're starting with nutrition because why? Well, here's the deal. Whether you like it or not, nutrition is no longer just a discussion about macro and micronutrients, good versus bad carbs. A calorie is truly not a calorie. And science has opened the door to the clinical connection. And if you haven't heard about it, it's the field of nutrigenomics. Now, what this is, is the scientific study of the interaction of nutrition, what we're taking into our bodies, and our genes. And it's especially in regards to the prevention and the treatment of these chronic diseases coming up. And we're gonna talk about this you know, paradigm of what's really been going on in healthcare. So we're thinking about food. Oops, sorry guys, I missed that on my highlight there. But we're talking about food as information. And we wanna understand the role it has in contributing to either sickness and disease or health and well-being. Because the reason we're talking about is again, the foods that we're all eating, not just our patients, everything I'm talking about tonight applies to each and every one of us. So we have to be willing to first turn the lens onto ourselves, right? Are we practicing what we preach to our patients? And typically we're not, or we're not fully, and it's okay 
it just because you're not living this doesn't mean that you can't teach it because sometimes the very thing we teach is the thing that we need the most of, right? So as this resonates with you tonight, I want you to think, where can you turn that lens on yourself? Where can you start to make small improvements as well? Because what we are eating is impacting our health, like it or not. And here's some really interesting facts. We consume, you and I and our patients, 5.5 million pounds of food in a lifetime. That's an enormous amount of consumption. Think about it. Now, all of this stuff we're taking in, again, it's either contributing to health or to disease because food is information. It, it, we, it's not just we are what we eat. We are what we absorb. We are this information and how it's a pa impacting our genetics and cellular expression. It's causing things to turn on and turn off. You know, something that we'll actually be speaking about at Cash Practice Accelerator is epigenetics. Now, epigenetics is really kind of what led the door opening to nutrigenomics, and epigenetics is understanding how the environment, how that external environment of how we're living, breathing, eating, thinking, doing, not doing, impacts our internal environment, our internal physiology, and that internal environment is what our cells are bathed in. That internal environment now we know scientifically is what's driving expression of disease or excuse me, driving expression of the genes, pardon me, to turn on, turn off. And food is a contributing factor to that. It has its own signals as well. So we now know chronic disease is the game changer, right? It, for eons, the big thing in healthcare was really more of an acute base type of problem came, you went in, you broke the bone, you got it casted, you know, maybe you had an anti-inflammatory, you know, you, you were on a short-term round of something. But now, my gosh, you know, you and I, if we were children of the 60s or the 70s, um, even into the early 80s, you know, we got maybe about uh, six to 12 vaccines in a lifetime, and now the schedule is 72, 72. So we can see that things have really shifted, right? So chronic disease is a game changer. Pharmacology is a game changer. Big pharma is really driving the business of healthcare, really driving the business of sick care. And you and I in this integrative space have to understand all this. And while we may not be able to directly go head to head with big pharma, and there may be a time and a place for medication, but it doesn't correct things, right? It treats and it manages symptoms. So you and I, the integrative health and wellness practitioner. We're here to look at root cause resolution and understand what are these components, okay? And so let's go back to the 5.5 million pounds of food consumed. Our patients are making decisions at least three times a day of what goes in their body that can either move them closer along this trajectory of chronic disease or towards health and wellness. It's, the rate has accelerated by more than 35% in 20 years and really what we're seeing from our healthcare costs, 86% of our national healthcare costs go to treat chronic disease. Now, the question is, what's going on? Why have things accelerated so much literally in 25 years? What is happening? Why have the, has the shift, it's almost been like a light switch from one extreme to the other. Now, we have to ask, what is it? Is it something in the environment? If we know that epigenetics environment impacts genes, we know nutrigenomics, food impacts genes, then the question is, are the foods that we're eating and getting from our environment making us sick? Now, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not a conversation that we're going to go into depth right now, but here is the information. And so it's just interesting when it's right here in front of us, you know, you connect the dots. So we can see that this is just the percentage of GMO crops grown in the U.S. since 1995. The introduction of GMOs came in 1995. And look at the trajectory in 1995 of how quickly chronic disease has accelerated in 25 short years. Now, interestingly enough, this is looking at just the three main types of um, of GMOs that are grown here in the USA. I want to point out a few things. Just this is a side note. For many of you out there that are a big proponent of gluten-free diets, please know that corn is gluten-free. And if it is not organic, then guess what? It's GMO. So we have to really think there's, there can be, you know, nutrition can be very, it can be 
a, a lot. It can be a lot. But I just wanted to point that out to you that if you're an advocate of gluten-free, that's great. But the next step is you've really got to be an advocate of organic because otherwise they're still getting this effect. And is it the GMO? Is it that is it that manipulation of the genetic makeup that's impacting our genetic makeup? Let's also look at soybean. I want to point this out to you. Soybean is the number one grown GMO crop here in the U.S. And if you look at anything in a box, a bag, a can, what is the ingredient that's always in it? Soy lecithin. Soy lecithin is an emulsifier. It's made from soybean. And that's just one of the places, but it's in everything that's coming out of the grocery store, unless it was, you know, grown in the earth, right? So again, hopefully by now you're getting, we are what we eat, we are what we absorb, and each bite that's on the end of our fork moves us closer to sickness or to health and well-being. So for you and I as clinicians, we have to say, all right, look, I, I may not be a nutritional expert, but where do I begin? Where do I begin? Because I'm getting it that this is a part, even if I'm not equipped in my office to take on that full discussion and I want to build a, a partnership, a strategic referral partnership with a great nutritionist in my area to send my patients to, okay, great. But where do you begin? Because you have to be able to clinically discern the role. And there are some very low-hanging fruit options of how you can go ahead and really begin to support. I'm not saying you need to treat, but how you can support what you're finding in your patients just with some phenomenal nutraceutical grade products like Numedica has to offer. So where do we begin? We start by, you know, we're going to start with paperwork and because remember every meal changing who we are, who are you, who are your patients. So what's one of the simplest things you could imagine looking at on patient paperwork? Well, there's going to be the signs, there's going to be the symptoms, there's going to be just the simple conversation of what's a daily life in your nutritional makeup look like, right? What, what do you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What kind of snacks? Just that alone, even if you knew nothing else, you know, here's standard American diet, highly inflammatory, no real nutritional value, nothing, nothing grown from the earth here. Here's a lot of good information that's going to the cells. That's, that's all the good greens, organic, wild-caught salmon. That's in its natural form that's going to give some really good information to our body to heal. Okay, so functional nutrition. It's going to allow you to widen your lens, to view greater contributing factors to your patients of how they're presenting with their health challenges. It's also going to allow you, the doc, whether you're a functional medicine specialist or not, just to take a more root cause and system imbalance approach to care. That's going to then allow you to engage your patients in key actions that focus on building health by restoring proper physiological function with nutrition. If you did nothing else but help them to start trending towards more organic versus more GMOs, okay? If you did nothing else but make sure that they're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, forget all the other stuff. You know, more than 80% of the women, especially that come in, and men do this a lot too, to your practice, they are going to tell you that they skip breakfast. They have coffee and out the door they go. That's one of the most crucial meals they have. Guess, a, guess what a simple thing is here. This is a take a note right now. Simple thing you can do, put them on the total vegan or the slim fit shake. Give them a shake. It's easy. They're tasty. They can be really compliant and they're getting key nutritional value so that now at least we're having some stability in core nutrient makeup for their body. Okay, so again, I'm not expecting you to become a clinical nutritionist if that's not your passion, but by just starting to realize a few things of where, you know, things could be going haywire for your patients, you can make some very simple but very profound um, guidance recommendations that'll get them on the right step. Okay, so we're going to look in two sections. We're going to start with paperwork and we're going to go to then to exam. So first paperwork. You want to make sure that your paperwork is clearly set up to review signs and symptoms and clinical dysfunctions, and you've got to make sure that you've got that lifestyle section. We want to specifically ask them questions about their diet, about their lifestyle, about, you know, what are they eating? And honestly, gang, it's as simple as putting on there, give me, a, you know, give me an example of what you ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner yesterday, or the day before, or what do you most commonly have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Do you drink sodas? Do you eat a lot of fast foods? Do you skip meals? Lifestyle. Do they, you know, are they highly, how, what would they rate their stress on a scale from one to 10? Do they exercise? Are they sedentary all day? You know, are they, do they work inside or outside? We're thinking about environmental toxins. 
signs and symptoms, this is stuff that should already be there. So if we think of all the systems in the body and we start to think about those signs and symptoms, remember, those are simply clues. So symptoms are the body's way of talking, of giving us clinical insight of where we want to kind of take a closer look that things could be going on. So you can start there. Here's an example. Let's say that, you know, their symptoms are they've got a lot of mood swings, they're tired in the afternoon, they crave a lot of sweets, they can't lose weight, they've got a real foggy brain, they can't figure it out. They think, man, doc, it must be my hormones, I must need to, that must be what it is, or I must have a thyroid problem. Okay, maybe, but let's just look a little deeper. What's just happening with their diet and lifestyle? So now let's say we're asking things like we're finding out that they drink caffeine. We're finding out they're high stress. We're finding out they're eating a lot of fast food. And we're finding out that they eat a lot of sugar because they've got all of this, all these mood swings and this fatigue. So they're trying to bump it with caffeine and sugar to keep them up and going. Well, of course, yeah, that's going to dysregulate their hormones. But guess what? If we could just get some of the junk out, reduce the caffeine, right? Stabilize the blood sugar. Now it's a different, it's a different process that will improve your overall clinical picture. All right. So where do we start in the clinical exam for clinical nutrition? There's a lot of things you could look at. We're going to keep it simple today. We're going to talk about skin, nails, and blood pressure. Skin, nails, and blood pressure. I'm not saying you have to strip them down. You're not going to have to do anything difficult. It's some visual inspection that will quickly give you a tremendous amount of information, okay? So let's think about the skin. What does it reveal as it pertains to nutrition? First of all, I want to tell you everything that I'm presenting here has come from Dr. Weatherby's Signs and Symptoms Analysis from a Functional Perspective, fantastic book, as well as the leading book from IFM, Institute for Functional Medicine, Clinical Nutrition and Functional Approach. So in this skin exam, if you see acne, you're immediately thinking blood sugar dysregulation or hormonal imbalance, especially if this is chronic, you want to ask a few questions. Is it all the time? Is it cyclical? So you're looking at acne and you're immediately thinking we got blood sugar and blood sugar. I'm just going to tell you guys, if you know nothing else about nutrition or clinical nutrition, blood sugar regulation is so foundational in overall health and well-being for the metabolic system for the endocrine for the cardiometabolic and the endocrine system okay as well as central nervous system i mean it's foundational to so much to so much that that all deals around energy production and hormones and inflammatory cycles so you want to be really keyed in to how do i stabilize blood sugar if you know nothing else how do i stabilize blood sugar we'll talk more about that in a few slides up ahead. So if you see multiple pigmented, so you know pigmentation, dark spots, right? If it's dark, that's hyper. If it's light, hypo, where the, the, the color is going away from the skin. So if you see multiple pigmented skin tags on the neck or around the underarms, if you see the darkening of the tissue, that hyperpigmentation at the back of neck, this is a clear sign of blood sugar dysregulation and they are on the fast track to type 2 diabetes, okay? You want to check for bumps on the back of the arms. This is a sign of vitamin A or essential fatty acid deficiency. If they have slow wound healing, so they bruise really easily, they get cut and it takes forever to heal, this is a sign. Again, what do you keep hearing? Diabetes. Listen to all this blood sugar dysregulation stuff. It's so epidemic, you guys. You're going to see it all the time in your practice. Um, this could also be a deficiency of zinc, essential fatty acids, vitamin C, and bioflavonoids. Dry, scaly skin, excuse me, is another sign of vitamin A deficiency. So hopefully you're already seeing just in this few little things, and this is all visual inspection. You're just quickly looking. You're looking at their face. You're looking around the neck. You're doing a little walk around. You're going to just have them lift up their sleeve. You know, you're going to look at the back of the neck. You're going to ask them about wounds, and you're going to notice if they have reported or if you visually see any dry or scaly skin. And now you're already thinking, man, we've got some nutrient deficiencies. All right, so let's talk for a moment about blood sugar regulation. Now, one of the nice things here at Numedica is they've got some really beautiful synergistic blends. And guys, I literally just took this picture right off their website, but you can go right onto the online catalog and here it is, blood sugar support. And it really gives you kind of that nice list of everything they've got. But let me give you some of the research to support why they've got some of the blends that they've got. 
So one of the first one, you see Synergy, that's of course, you know, the main active ingredient there, that's cinnamon. And we know that cinnamon, it works synergistically with insulin and it's clinically shown to lower fasting blood glucose levels and lipids. Here's one of the PubMed studies that tells all about that. ALA, alpha lipoic acid, that's a powerful antioxidant that also has been shown to lower uh, fasting blood glucose levels significantly, not just a lot, excuse me, not just a little, but a lot. And they've got one of the best ALA, just standalone formulas on the market. Chromium picolinate. Now this one's been around forever. We've heard a lot of research. And what I love about chromium picolinate is not only, this is what's so huge about it, not only does it show significant decrease in helping to normalize uh, glucose and lipid metabolism, but it's shown to reduce fasting blood glucose levels and hemoglobin A1C. So we know when we're dealing with type 2 or prediabetes, hemoglobin A1C is that marker that's really more indicative of it, do they really have this problem? Because fasting blood glucose, if they didn't fast properly, you know, depending on when it was taken, there can be so many things that can really um, skew that number. So if you're wondering if a patient is pre-diabetic or diabetic, the hemoglobin A1C is the marker you want to look at. Great study here on PubMed showing, again, how it is clinically shown to reduce those markers and improve those. Now, B6 and B12, let's, this, these are so, I mean, we know our Bs are essential, right, for proper metabolic endocrine, nerve support, any of those energy production and hormonal pathways, they are essential, adrenal support. But here's an interesting fact when we're thinking about blood sugar regulation. The, the more dysregulation we have, and now if a patient is actually on metformin for either diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes, or PCOS, that's a really common drug they give for PCOS, there is clinical research, here's the, the marker for you here, that shows a direct correlation with B12 deficiency. And so that's when you're going to start to have a lot of those fatigue issues going on, as well as they're not going to, it's going to make it harder for them to normalize um, insulin production and, and blood sugar response. So these are all really key, key nutrients. Please click on the links. Take a look at the research. It's here for you guys. PubMed is a phenomenal, easy place to go just if you want to, you got some downtime and you want to see what's really going on out there. Magnesium, man, we know magnesium has so many far-reaching effects in the body. But in regards to blood sugar regulation, it's foundational. It really helps with proper carbohydrate carbohydrate ma metabolism, blood sugar regulation. Again, here's the, the link for the studies on that. And curcumin. Ooh, huge, wonderful study showing the anti-diabetic properties. And can we talk for a moment about the new liposomal curcumin? Oh my gosh. So you guys, if you're seeing any signs from that visual inspection, you're seeing signs and symptoms that are talking about fatigue, they're skipping meals, they eat a lot of sugars, they drink a lot of caffeine, they do a lot of artificial sweeteners, okay? You're starting to think, man, we could really have some blood sugar dysregulation. Or maybe they actually know they're pre-diabetic or diabetic. So now you're cluing into these and you're thinking, hey, I'm not treating them for those, but I can support better function at the cellular level to give their body back some of these essential nutrients that they're being robbed of. Because here's the thing, if we can't get these nutrients, if we can't get these symptoms under control, we can't get a full corrective outcome. Patients are coming to you for outcomes. You're looking for outcomes in your practice. If you're not getting the outcomes or they're not getting the outcomes that you want in the way that you want them, you've got to look and dig a little deeper and say why, what's missing, or what's another piece to this puzzle Again, that's what clinical nutrition is. Now, let's talk nails for just a moment. Spooning of the nails, it's a sign of iron deficiency. So again, if you're getting a lot of fatigue, if you're seeing thyroid problems, then we can't correct a thyroid if we can't get iron you know, regulation going properly. So this, the, if you're doing clinical diagnostics and your tests, this is where you're going to then look at the CBC, a total iron, total iron binding capacity and ferritin levels to know more about that. You're going to look for soft nails or poor growth. And if that's happening, that could be a sign of hypochloridia. It, chloridia, excuse me, <laughs> I'm having a tongue twister, in that GI system, okay? So they're going to have a lot of signs and symptoms of stomach upset, of bloating. Uh, you know, they're just not, they're having slow transit time. They're ha dealing with things like constipation. This is a key sign of mineral deficiency. Cracking of the tips of the fingers. This is a sign... Um, and inflammation of the cuticles is a sign of zinc deficiency, okay? 
red tips to the fingers with abnormal nail growth may be a sign of mercury toxicity. Ridging of the fingernails, this is common with multiple mineral deficiencies. Fissured or fissuring or impaired growth, protein deficiency, brittle nails, essential fatty acids. There's a lot, you guys, that the nails can tell you. This is just a short list. There's so, so much. But if I had to sum this up in one word, what do you see coming up continuously? It's minerals. It's minerals. So if we're seeing problems in the nails, I want you to think that they're really having a problem absorbing. So we are not only what we eat, we are what we absorb. So if they're having problems with absorption, first of all, we've got to get in there and really go ahead and give some, you know, clinical doses of minerals depending on what's going on. Uh, we'll talk at the Cash Practice Accelerator about one of the, the functional blood chemistry tools that we use that really helps to pull back the curtain on some specific mineral deficiencies and, and some great clinical tools to make this simple. But anyway, if you have to just to keep it simple right now, just think problems with the nails, they're not absorbing, we've got mineral deficiency. And if we don't have key minerals, man, there's so much that's not going right in the body. I know that's simply said, but I'm trying to keep this short because we've only got 30 minutes and I'm already getting late on time. So I'm, I'm going to kind of pick up the space, the pace rather, but keep in mind that minerals are so essential, you guys, in healing. So if you're seeing slow healing, you're seeing your patients are taking longer to get the corrective clinical outcomes that you anticipate, then you've got to be thinking, am I missing some underlying deficiencies? So things like constipation, bloating, or abdominal pain, decreased immune function, diarrhea, irregular heartbeats, loss of appetite, muscle cramping is a huge one, right? Nausea, vomiting, numbness, tingling in the extremities, poor concentration, slow social or mental development in children, weakness, fatigue, these are all some signs and symptoms that really can be pointing to mineral deficiency. So here are some of the causes. So A, we're either not getting good stuff in, okay? So if, they're, if you see on that lifestyle questionnaire, on that dietary questionnaire, they're eating a lot of processed foods, things that come from a box, a bag, or a drive-thru. If you're doing a lot of fast food, they're drinking a lot of sodas, they take a lot of medications, these are all things that can rob the body of key minerals. If they're doing a very low calorie diet, maybe they just came off of HCG or some extreme weight loss program, or maybe they have an eating disorder, or they're an elderly person that's just got a very poor appetite. These are other causes of, and clues pointing to why they would have mineral deficiencies. If we've got restricted diets, and this is really common with vegetarians or vegans, people with food allergies, okay? But then the other part of this, guys, is again, maybe their diet is clean as can be. So if you're seeing a good diet, you're seeing a pretty balanced diet, then your brain is thinking, I've got problems in the GI. I've got potentially leaky gut. I've got absorption issues. Let me figure out how to help heal that GI, okay? That's another talk for another upcoming webinar. Today, we're just helping you to frame your brain of where you're looking clinically. Next, uh, what are some other causes? If they're having difficulty digesting, again, look at this, or absorbing, now we're thinking, okay, we've got leaky gut, or we've got a problem with the liver, gallbladder, the intestines. So what's happening in that gastrointestinal system as a whole? You know, maybe they've had surgery of the digestive tract, so we want to look on that health history. Could they, do we see that they drink a lot of alcohol? So maybe they're drinking more than they're telling us. And again, what type of medications? Are you seeing that they are on antacids? Are they taking antibiotics two or more times a year? Okay, do they do laxatives? Do they do diuretics? These are all reasons that the body could be deficient in minerals, which are essential to your healing path, okay? Last but not least, from a clinical perspective, you must, you must, you must, I don't care what type of specialty you have, you must be doing blood pressure, right? This tells us so much. This is a screening tool. So I love this chart. Again, I got this from Institute for Functional Medicine, and it's in their book. But when we start to see blood pressure going into abnormal ranges, depending on where we're at, and this grid is so wonderful, you can look at it as you download the notes, we realize we're now, depending on where we're at, we're looking at metabolic syndrome. We're looking at risk factors for, we got high blood pressure, we're thinking inflammation. We're thinking prediabetes, diabetes, increased risk of heart attack, of stroke, right? We are thinking we've got problems. Where is it coming from? Now, we'll talk about this in upcoming webinar modules, but one of the key areas is we've got to look at the adrenals, and we do have to look at blood, we've got to look at blood sugar. So what's going on with their core foundational nutrients 
and let's talk macronutrients, protein, complex carbohydrates, and essential fats. So at every core meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they should be getting at least 12 grams of protein. They should be getting a, 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 you know, we want, think of, we want a fistful, a fistful of protein, a fistful of complex carb, and we want essential fatty acids, uh, fats, excuse me, which are typically present in it, and that's, you know, adding in some of those good avocado, coconut oil, um, olive oil. If you're doing some good wild-caught uh, fish, salmon, that's going to have some really good uh, fats in it, and these are really important. So we want those macronutrients present at each meal to help be just a foundational level to uh, make sure that blood pressure, that, that blood sugar is all good. And, of course, what's another thing that can really skew blood pressure? Hydration. Hydration, and we are chronically dehydrated. So I know I'm giving you a lot today. Please, I hope you're taking notes because some of those clinical pearls are not written down in here. So now what? How do we actually put the pieces together? Well, this is where I want you to think about, again, clinical practice, guys, is just like healing. It's a process. It's not a one and done. It's not. So it's about watching these webinars. It's about coming out to our live Cash Practice Accelerator seminar. And it's about just getting it. The more you can hear these messages, the more it really starts to stick. And you'll think about certain patients and go, oh, man, yeah, Sally needs this and Bob needs this. And that just happened last week. Or today, somebody will come walking through your practice with exactly these types of, of markers and, and findings. And you're going to now be able to think, I've got more in my tool belt. I've got more in this process from exam to care to correction. How do I help get better results, better outcomes? Well, it's understanding what goes into the process. So listen, if you found this really valuable today, this was just part one of four. But what we're going to do, and this is, again, it's accelerated, right? So when you come out to the Cash Practice Accelerator full day seminar, what I want you to know is we go through the clinical. I mean, half the day is all about clinical. We're going to be talking about clinical exams and functional blood chemistry. We're going to be looking at detoxification pathways in the liver and the GI. We're going to be talking about the microbiome. We're going to be talking about the adrenals. We're going to be talking about clinical nutrition and these foundational pathways that you need to understand that all have relevance regardless of what type of specialty you are. Then we're going to help in the second half of the day to put the pieces together in a systematic way so you can bring kind of these new awarenesses into your overall corrective care plans. You're going to learn how to market. You're going to learn how to actually sell cash services since insurance is drying up by the day and people have to pay more and more out of pocket. And that's why we call it cash practice. We're going to teach you how and why, what it takes to get a patient to actually pay out of pocket for your services. And we're going to teach you how to put it all together in a cash model that works, proven business systems. Myself and leading doctors from around the country are doing and running very successful cash practices. And again, you don't have to ditch insurance. This is something you can do in with your current model, but it's going to make your systems better so you can get better outcomes for yourself and for your patients. So remember, here's some of the things I just told you what you're going to learn about. Um, if you can come out and join us, we're going to be in cities really across the country. We're going to be in Chicago. This, uh, in 2016, we're going to be Chicago. We're going to be Charlotte. 2017, we're going to be heading out to the West Coast. We're going to be going down into Texas. So we're going to be in a lot of places. So definitely go to the website. I don't want you feeling like this. I want you to have the success that you need. And we're making it really easy. Actually, I should say New Medica is making it super, super, super easy. We have early bird pricing one month till the day of the event, okay? So, for example, um, Chicago starts October 1. So come September 1, early bird pricing is gone. Early bird pricing already saves you 100 bucks. But what Numedica is doing is they're providing an extra gift. So you get a special discount code, Numedica 50 It's going to save you an extra $50 for you as well as we want you to bring your staff because you can't do this alone, Doc. You can come back with the best information, but if you don't have your team engaged to help you implement this, you're still going to be in overwhelm. You're still going to be struggling. So we've made it really easy for staff, for students to come, you know, for the whole team to be there. So please, 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 we want you to come. We want you to be a part of this. We want you to be with us. And to do that, you're just going to go right over here to fmpracticeaccelerator.com. 
When you have the notes, this is a hot link, so you can click it. You can go there right now while you're watching, fmpracticeaccelerator.com. You'll be able to see the cities. You'll be able to sign up, but don't miss, please. This is not a time to procrastinate. If you know, if this has helped you at all and you know that you want to take action to continue to learn and be supported by the best leaders in the industry, we have a phenomenal uh, group of educators that are going to be there to support you that day. And we've got done for you turnkey solutions. So you don't have to sit there and go, well, this is great, but now what? We've got it all wrapped up in a pretty little bow for you. So go check out what city is close to you. Sign up now so you don't miss out on that special pricing because prices are absolutely going up. I don't want you to miss that out. So I'm hoping this was really helpful for you guys. I'd love to hear from you. I tried to keep this short. Oh, it was, I love this stuff. I could talk all day. And so I want to be respectful of your time. There's a, a Q&A box right over here to the side, guys. I know we're, I, I don't have time for um, actual verbal questions right now, but if you type your questions in there to me, I'll make sure to get back to you, the team and I, within 24 hours. So please type your questions in right now. We're getting ready to wrap. I just want to personally thank you for your time. fmpracticeaccelerator.com. Come on out to the live event. Um, and definitely, you know, we're going to be doing these seminar webinars. We've got three more coming up over the next six weeks. So make sure to keep your eye out and your inbox for the next invite because I want to see you in webinar two. Put your questions over there now. I'll get back to you. I want to thank New Medica. I want to thank each of you because I know that you're dedicated. You're dedicated to yourself and to your patients and to your practice. So from my heart to yours, thanks for dedicating your time tonight. And until I have the opportunity to meet you or to speak with you, continue, Doc, to stay amazing.